Good morning, everyone. Um, can you hear us okay? This is just a sound check for, for LOD. I hope it's working well. How are you, Guillem? Very good. Happy to be here again after three years since the last Dexma Day. Exactly. It's been a pity. How about you? Good. So <laughs> here we are as well, uh, waiting to get vaccinated in Spain. Yeah. But we hope to get vaccinated in the next coming weeks. Sure, sure. <laughs> Good. Uh, so thanks everyone for connecting this morning into the Dexma Day. Uh, as Guillem was saying, uh, well, we will introduce ourselves, but basically, well, if you want first to introduce yourself. Hi, good morning. I'm Guillem Corominos. I'm co-founder and, and CTO at Dexma. And here is and myself, I'm Joan <laughs> Pignol, a co-founder of the company as well and uh, the CEO. Good. So as as we were saying, uh, we hope your your families are are fine, are safe. Uh, of course, and of course that the COVID nineteen gets away very very soon because it's been a bit of a struggling the last coming months. But here we are. Uh, of course, we have not stopped at Dexma. We have lots of things to share uh, today, and that's why we wanted to do this event again, even at least to do it online because for. For many of, of the ones that you're connecting now today, we've been doing these events uh, as well on site in Barcelona, in Madrid uh, for a long time. But this year, of course, it was better to do it online. Good, so let's start a bit with the agenda that we have for, for today. Is this working? Perfect. So uh, Guillem and I, we will start. Uh, more and more in these events, we get less time. Sorry for okay. for it. It might be that it's the less interesting track of the session. It might be, uh, but of course we will hope to share with you uh, the best in these 15, 20 minutes that we will have. It will be basically about market overview, technology trends, and some corporate updates. And then we'll jump in uh, the product update session led by Daniel Luches and Alicia Gomeya. Here is where we will share uh, the main uh, improvements that we've been doing uh, in our existing uh, products and as well new products that we're launching today. And then you saw in the registrants uh, form that this year you had three options. So we have a plenary session, Guillem and I, and Danny and Alicia. And then you have to choose, but you will have your time if you have not still choose. Uh, to, to decide if you want to connect to the first track, which is start improving your energy efficiency. This is main for, uh, well, this is thought for organizations who want to uh, increase their energy efficiency, reduce their energy bills, increase their sustainability, and as well for ESCOs. Then the second track, the B, is uh, the utility of the future. The main goal of this session is for utilities. That is one of the key customers of Dexma as well. And the C and the last one, not the less important, um, is if you are a Dexma customer, uh, we recommend you to connect to this session yeah. because here you will uh, discover if opportunities that we are foreseeing that you can take in your day-to-day -day business, okay? And that's it. Uh, the Q&A sessions will be embedded, these uh, sidetracks that we have. Uh, so we are going to be closing the sessions around 10.35. Of course, if the Q&A session gets uh, hot and you have tons of questions, we can extend it. We will be here all day in the office. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so let's start. Uh, so you might be familiar uh, with this picture. Have you seen this picture before, Guillaume? Yeah, I think it sounds familiar to me. So this picture, uh, basically it's a very simple way to show how the average temperature of the wall is evolving. Um, you might, so between one year and another year, you might not feel the difference or see the difference, but as the decades uh, accumulate, accumulate, the story I think that becomes clear. So here we have between 1850 to 2019, every stack is uh, the average temperature of the entire planet, and you're seeing that it's getting very, very red. So we have even done this uh, this focus uh, square this year, in case you're not wearing your glasses, to see that the color is getting really, really red. 
What really means this is that the world has, uh, it, it got one uh, Celsius degree warmer than it was in the pre-industrial levels. Mm -hmm. And we have heard a lot in the media and the scientists claiming that if the world gets to 1.5 Celsius degrees hotter, or even if it gets to a Celsius degree more, the, the, the consequences are, are very hard. We don't have to repeat it today here. So we are concerned about this, and we hope we can share some clarity on, on it. And here, of course, as well, some, sometimes we find some climate change uh, denials. Um, so people who is not believing really that this is happening. So here, uh, this, this chart, of course, comes from uh, Ed Hawkins, who is a climate researcher, and it has uh, its website, it's called uh, Climate Stripes. But here you can see as well how different regions in the world are evolving, and it looks uh, as bad yeah, as the average goal. Okay, so we would just wanted to share this uh, with you today. Good. Uh, so moving more into positive news. So what we've seen uh, recently from the EU is that uh, this claim that the EU wants to become carbon neutral by 2050. What does it mean this for the energy management software sector and uh, our customers? Basically, it's uh, that we're going to, at least in Europe, uh, see a huge investment from the EU, so up to one trillion. So this is uh, going to happen in the next decade. I think that Europe has never before mobilized so much money. And the good thing is that it's for sustainability and it's for climate change. So this will start applying in the different countries, in the different European countries, in terms of subsidies etc cetera, etc cetera, to accelerate energy efficiency and sustainability so at least we're happy with this and as well we were of course very happy to see that uh that the us came back to the paris agreement and they've done uh, a first uh claim you know, that they want to reach net zero emissions by 2050 so this is as well a good thing that the us is coming back mm -hmm. uh, and agrees with it and well, without extending this, what surprised us as well a few weeks ago, it was uh, this news uh, that we found in the in the newspaper that it's not it's not only the regulation, but we're starting to see some courts in this uh, in in this in this case the Dutch court, who is uh, making mandatory to take action on uh, carbon emissions. So in this case, in this uh, in this case, apply to Shell, but we think this is going to apply to so many companies that are not taking action, or they are not doing it fast enough. Yeah. Okay. Good. So this was just a bit of context to uh, to uh, land on the Dexma mission. No. So why we're here today? Why are we why we come to work uh, every day at the office? is because we believe in the digitalization of uh, the energy and the sustainability and of course we want to help with our software uh, to help people and organizations to understand how they consume energy so they can manage it and reduce it okay Great. and of course we introduced this picture uh, it's been all about covid for the last 18 months it's it's normal but we want people to do not forget about uh, climate change a real big wave that's yeah, exactly so uh guillem we have seen a bit of context um you are the cto so you are the technology smartest mind or one of the smartest minds in in dexma there are much more smart minds than, than mine there <laughs> which which do you think are the, the the trends or the things that are going to impact us in terms of technology to the energy management software and the sustainability world yeah thanks ron we have identified uh, mainly three trends that I uh, want to make special uh, mention that they will have uh, an impact at the end on, on, on technology in general, but uh, specifically we think that also in, in energy management, intelligent energy management. The first thing, it's, it's called no code, low code. I don't know if you've heard about this, but this is about starting to develop applications without coding or with very little coding. This 
uh, as a software developer myself, it's something that uh, I was a bit skeptical at the beginning uh, and the early days of this, which happened maybe 15, 20 years ago. We were in college, uh, John and I, in fact, and, and there's some softwares, rational pros, it was a software that started doing this, uh, maybe not in the right way and, and or in the, in the correct one because it didn't succeed. But now I think the technology is mature enough in terms of both uh, the backend technologies required to do all these integrations, the cloud uh, technologies that allow platforms to interact with each other, and also the UI to create really simple uh, ways of, of developing workflows that all of this have enabled uh, non-developers, people that have maybe uh, domain expertise, so energy managers or, or people who have very specific uh, um, knowledge to be able to develop their technologies, their, their applications, and this will have a, a great impact in, in, in the apps market, adding up features in, in, in the software without having to code or coding very little, maybe the only the some parts, but this will democratize the, the, the app development world. So it's, it's, it, we think this is uh, very interesting and now it's, it's the time to start looking at it. Good. Then the second one is something that uh, maybe it's not a, a, a positive trend that, that uh, we have to be more aware of that, but at the end it makes our, our software and our, our data more secure. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's something that at the end it has a, a, good, uh, a good output, which is that we're we're being forced to, to secure the applications uh, because there's more threats every day. So um, what we're, we're doing at Dexman, I think many organizations as well, is uh, having to uh, put more budget on security and, and increase the, the consciousness uh, of all employees of the company, of all customers, to, to make uh, the, the application more, more secure and, and to keep the secure environment. Uh, work from home has produced lots of security incidents that because people was not used to do it, uh, but there's ways to protect them. And at Dexman, we're doing penetration tests, uh, we're doing vulnerability tests. We have done, we have a, a, a disaster recovery that we have been doing during the last years. And this year, in we are doing, uh, we're certifying with the ISO 27001 to make sure that all these processes don't lack any, any part and we have a, a secure uh, organization at, at, in general. And then the third trend is something that we've been talking uh, during the last years and at Dexma since the launch of Detect, which was the first, uh, the first development that uh, made use of artificial intelligence. But now we're reaching a third generation where the, the key of this last uh, generation is that it's able to learn by itself. And an example of this is optimized that you'll see uh, moreover in the in this presentation uh, an, an exact uh, detail of what it does. But it's capable of learning automatically of a behavior of a building and setting uh, automatically some alerts on what it, so it should ha not happen or should happen more often in order to save energy. So this is something that uh, it's just starting that we want to develop more on, on this. But we think it will be key on, on, on managing buildings uh, in, a, in a large scale and with, uh, and, and with a better uh, output than, than, the, than the current possible of uh, the, the previous years. And now, uh, Joan will talk about the, the market evolution also these this last years in, in energy management. Sure. So thanks, Guillaume, for these uh, technology trends. And, and here we have, uh, well, I have to say thanks uh, for the credit of this slide that I robbed it to a colleague of mine who is Miguel Cruz. So in case, I'm going to introduce it, but in case you want to go further in this slide, uh, you should join afterwards the session A uh, that is led by Miguel Cruz that is uh, improving your energy efficiency of, of your organization. So in this slide, what we're seeing is um, a bit of how it has evolved the energy management systems and the energy management software world. So when Dexma started in, back in 2007, uh, it was all about uh, wireless sensors at that time. Of course, we had uh, growing energy costs. Some, some people uh, were interested in energy management, but not that much. 
And we found at that time that the UK, it was the most advanced market that it has been since the 90s, that they had created different softwares, not for only utility bill tracking, but to track data in, in real time. So we could say that between 2007 and 2015, still is a bit of a niche uh, market, the NFT management software. Between 2015 and 2020, what we start to see is some key countries, at least in Europe, uh, that start accelerating, like France, Italy, and Nordics. And not only these key countries, but the main, uh, the, the main motivations no, of, of this growth is because of course regulation, administration of regulation towards energy efficiency, but as well the race of the cloud. Because when Dexma, we started between 2007 and 2010, at that time we were not a cloud software, we were on-premise. But we really, we rapidly took the decision to go cloud, but of course we suffered it many, many years because at that time was not a fancy word or was not the rule of thumb uh, in every software as we find it nowadays. And then of course the rise of IoT, which as well reduces the capex, no? because you have many different sensors, many different meters that are reducing really the costs. So you can start collecting energy data, weather data, temperature data, air quality, et cetera, et cetera, at a very affordable price for first time in history. So this started to rise the energy management software market. But what in reality we see is that still the big window opportunity, it's untapped. So it's gonna come for the next decade. We're gonna link this with this EU stimulus package that we have seen as well the US will, will get in. So this will make that this market will, uh, will continue to grow at a 10 to 20% annual growth rate. And not, of, not only because of course of, of binding regulations, which makes sense of course for climate change, but because of as well the race of digital meters. So a lot of European countries, they are finalizing or ending their smart meters installations. So you, this means that any customer has real time information that they can take action. But as well as Guillaume was saying, the race of artificial intelligence. So no longer you need a, a huge team of people analyzing the data. It's as well the machines and the software that helps you to accelerate this and make the most of the data, okay? So, well, as, as I was saying, uh, thanks to Miguel for, for this slide, and how this translates to the market opportunity that we have in front of us. Dexma is based in Barcelona, and it's been more focused in Europe, but of, of course we have to say that we work close to 35 countries, so the software is ready for, uh, to do projects outside Europe. But the opportunity in Europe only, it's around 20, uh, 22, 23 million SMEs. So here in this slide, you can find how Dexma addresses each category depending on their size. So you can see that we are going to address the micro and the small companies through our partners, like we've done uh, since the last decade mainly micro uh, companies with utilities and small and medium with utilities and escorts that are the main uh, majority of partners that Dexma has nowadays. But as well, we have started to do some uh, direct uh, projects in Spain with large organizations with more than 250 employees. So here we expect as well to uh, lead this growth to be able to develop these projects of course, sometimes alone, sometimes with our partners, uh, trying to find the best uh, mix. So we make sure we cover the, all the B2B sector in, in Europe. And I think that we're running more or less um, out of time. So they gave us 20 minutes this year, as we said. But we wanted to share as well some important news on the, uh, on the corporate side of, of Texma. So as Guillem was saying, we started this company back in 2007 and last year Spacewell, which is a division of a large software organization based in Germany called the Nemechek Group, acquired 100% of the shares of, of Dexma. This in reality does not change Dexma that much. The only change of course is that now we are a public listed company and we cannot disclose uh, our revenues, yeah, sorry for that. <laughs> 
but of course it brings many good news in terms of uh, robustness and, and, and finance. So financially speaking, now we are part of a large organization and this will help us to accelerate uh, the development of our existing and new products and as well to reach new uh, geographies. Because uh, Nemechek and Spacewell, if you check their websites, you're going to see that they are fully internationalized. So here we expect uh, to, to become a, a growth driver as well for, for Dexmap because we have a lot of synergies with their existing customer base. Uh, there, there are also many sister companies in the same sector as us, like in AWMS, uh, that, that I think they will be very interesting for, for our customers as well to, to, to take a look at them and for their business as well. Sure. Good. So uh, we don't want to take more of your time in this first track. Uh, welcome again to the Dexma Day 2021. This is the photo that we found this year. Uh, we couldn't do it uh, for it one because of COVID, but here you have uh, some of our team members on the last Christmas photo that we did. So don't forget to have fun. And now we want to welcome and give a warm uh, introduction to Daniel Luches, our product director, and Alicia Comella, who is our senior product designer. Thank Thanks, you. everyone, and a big welcome to Daniel and Alicia. Hello, thank you, thank you, and welcome. Thanks, Juan. Thanks, Ian. Good luck. Thanks. Thank <laughs> so, good, good morning, audience. How are you? Are you okay? This is uh, Daniel and Alicia. Alicia, right? So we are going to be with you during the next 30 minutes, more or less, explaining the three steps to highly optimized energy intelligence, then the IoT paradox as well, and then the future of our Dexma platform, right? So roadmap and so on, isn't it? So let's let's make it. Uh, basically, why do we say that we have three steps? Because uh, regarding our experience, more than 10 years working into that field, we have always find the same pattern, the same problems, right? And that's why we've built these three steps, these three products to help you in your energy intelligence journey, okay? So at the very beginning of this step, we have this point here that it's when you as an organization have the trigger about the energy efficiency. You want to become more sustainable, you want to become more competitive in the market, you want to reduce your energy emissions, whatever it takes, right? So this is the very beginning. So, and the first question that you make always is, okay, but how much can I save? How far I am versus others? How big is my energy efficiency potential? And that's why we build the first step that it's Dexmeditech. Okay, Dexmeditech, it's basically a virtual auditing system that compares your building versus our database of more than 80,000 buildings, right? To give you insights regarding how far you are versus others, how efficient you are, which is your energy savings potential, and so important, which recommendations you can perform to start into this journey, right? Then, if your building has energy savings potential, then the obvious step, it's going uh, to the expo analyzed, it's analyzing in real time, so deploying sensors, getting data from your utility meter, and getting information in real time to analyze the patterns, detect energy and efficiencies, and so, so, so important, verify your energy savings. Each euro, each pound that you invest into energy efficiency needs to be verified, right? And the problem that we are facing afterwards was that as you are growing, you are putting more and more sensors, more and more meters, you have thousands of readings, millions of readings per year, but you don't have time to analyze the data. Right? And that's what we built last year, Dexma Optimize. It's a virtual energy manager based on artificial intelligence to detect anomalies in real time 24 7. So, what do you think, Alicia? Better explain? Maybe we, we show it? Yeah, let's show it. Let's show it. <laughs> so, I think that you're guys seeing our screen. Yeah, you are. Perfect. So, that's the platform, right? That's the platform here. You have the three products detect, analyze, and optimize. We will now show detect and analyze because then we have specific track for optimize. And Dexma Detect, it's it's beautiful because it scans 10 times faster and 20 times cheaper your whole portfolio of buildings, detecting which ones are the low-hanging fruit and where you should start making your investments. 
Okay, so now here we have portfolio of 1,112 uh, buildings, mainly located in Europe, right? So we have here all, all, all buildings. And the red spots are obviously the ones that have more energy efficiency potential. So very quick, you do all the pre-auditing, you get a score between zero to 100. 100 means you are so efficient, you would be the best building that we have ever seen into our database, so congratulations. <laughs> And on average, on that portfolio, we have 65 out of 100, okay? It's not that bad, but you have still 21% energy efficiency potential to achieve. And we estimate that savings in three millions per year, okay? So that's the amount of money that you could be saving every year. And that's something that we calculate without having to go in each of the building, right? So it's very, very quick. Then, of course, we give you uh, uh, detailed over overview for each of your buildings, right? And you can you can filter by savings potential and start going in detail to one on one of them. And then you would have a list of retrofits that you would need to perform in order to increase your efficiency. Okay, this is the X many take. So the next step would be okay. Let's pick one of those buildings that they have huge energy savings potential and let's deploy uh, the hardware, right? So the next step is basically to sync your gateways. Uh, that would be done very easy because we, we have hundreds of different natively integrated hardware. Okay, so almost each hardware box in the market is compatible with Dexma, EMSS, KDA, so whatever system you have, you can push data, we can process it. And then the good thing for energy manager is the playground, right? So we have full of different, let's say, problems that are being solved with Dexma Analyze, right? So you can start looking at your consumption, for example, we can put here a main for Luxembourg, for example, and then it loads, right? So this is the hourly data, we can go farther here, we can get 15 minutes data, and it goes very fast. You can select more than one building at the same time to make comparisons. And now, for example, what we can do is so far this year, analysis, hourly, Right, it takes here, and maybe I see here something here, right? So that screen allows you to play with it, right? So in that case, we can use, we can go and, yeah, exactly. So we could start analyzing, so what's going on here, right? So what's the problem with that peak? Why do we have several baseline patterns? So here we have a baseline, here we have another baseline, Right. If you see as well on Tuesdays, we have different pattern for Tuesdays. This is one Tuesday we got that consumption, but then the other Tuesday we got that consumption. Right. So that's why uh, very simple screenshots at that one. You can start getting a lot of information from from your devices, from your buildings, and then of course trying to save energy on that. Right. But then of course the money, the, the most important part for Dexma Analyze would be verificating or verifying your savings, right? So as I said, each single euro that you put into your buildings needs to be verified. And with Dexma, you would do that very, very easily, right? So here we have the full portfolio of uh, different projects that are ongoing. You have several sites, you have several projects ongoing, so you need a platform that in real time analyzes all of it, right? And verifies the savings. So in that case, we have an example located in Barcelona, <laughs> which is our, our city. Right? So this is a project from the first of 2021 to the last of 2021, so it lasts just one year. And you see the baseline in blue and the real consumption in red, green, or yellow, depending on how we are compared versus the baseline, right? So we have started making savings around middle March here, and we are now on target, right? So we were willing to achieve 15% energy savings target, and we are now in real time, 19.07. That changes every day. So depending on, on the amount of energy that we've been consuming. And here we have the aggregated target, right? So clearly we are on top of that. So this is it. Then of course we have reports, we have alerts, and and for and there is one last product that is missing, but I don't want to give it away. <laughs> so we will wait for the next track meeting. Okay. So now we, we can go, go back. So Alicia, could you tell us maybe the main drivers for, for, for the platform? So yes, uh, so Dexma can become your energy data hub 
um, we um, have great data insertion mechanisms. We have a, a scalable API. We are hardware agnostic. We have over 500 IoT integrations. Um, and of course, you can um, um, in, input all the historical data that you want with no There is no limit. No limit. No limit. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, we have great um, data analytics uh, based on uh, artificial intelligence. We have over 10 features, real features, um, from savings detection to automatic baseline calculations, uh, forecasting, and you know, energy disaggregation with the hardware, all sorts of things. And all this is based, uh, is created thanks to our proprietary database. <laughs> yeah. um, so we've been collecting some material data since 2007. Yeah. And we have um, 30 million daily data points. Uh, and of course, we can contextualize all this data with uh, loads of uh, weather data and you know any third party data that you might have um, you know, to enrich all these um, artificial intelligence features. So that's three things we believe that make us uh, in a good position to be your data, right? But there is much more. So for example, how fast and easy it is to cost to customize it, right? So we, we serve our product in OEM, so you can put your logos, you can put your color, branding colors. We can, you can use your own currencies, different time zones. You can configure your own reports. We have several, we have actually, I think it's around 13 languages available into the platform, so it's very spread worldwide. And there is, it's very, very simple to configure to make it up and running. You can use Excel spreadsheets to customize it, so it's so, so fast. Then, of course, data lake integration, big, big organizations that you are getting are already getting your data into your data lakes. Uh, we do. We, we can get that data from, from, from the data lakes. Even if you are in Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services, Microsoft Azure, we make the integration. So you don't have to worry about how the data would be pushed to the platform. And then of course, we have something very special that we call the apps market. And this is because a, a, a commercial product would never fit 100% of your needs. We are, we are totally conscious of that. So that's why we have opened our platform thanks to the API. So you can build or use third-party applications that have been developed on top of our platform. Nowadays, we have 33 public applications available, and there is more than 290 internal applications or custom applications that our customers have developed on his own to cover uh, the 100% of their needs, right? What else we have? So we are, we are um, born in the cloud. We are. <laughs> We were born in the cloud in 2007, yes. right? So, well. We're totally cloud based. We're scalable. We have a, a scalable API. And we have, um, as we said, the unlimited historical data insertion. We are secure. We have full backups every eight hours in our private network. And we have a tried and tested uh, disaster recovery plan. Very important. Um, and we're always available. So our, our uptime is 99.9%. And um, we, our, our cyber liability engineers are always on call, 24-7, yeah. uh, just in case anything might happen. So uh, what, what we say when always available, Alicia means that you can wake up at 3 a.m. and the system would be there. It's okay. <laughs> it would be all, all, always there just for you. Good. So uh, we have here an overview of the different organizations that are using our platform. We have more than 4,000 organizations. Trusting, uh, trying to save energy with, with our tool that makes us really proud of being there for this long, long journey. But there is much more to come. So John explained that the opportunity is huge. We have now a good wind, uh, so that will push all the sustainability market forward and the energy efficiency market forward. So we don't want to have 4,000. 4, we want to go 40,000, 4 million, 24 million, which is the whole bandwidth of of the European companies, right? As well, we are we are very named in different uh, researches performed by analysts, Verdantix, Memory, Navigant Research, Gartner. So we are always being named there. And we have a lot of good reviews in Captera and, and, other, and other software comparators mm -hmm. or benchmarking tools. Yeah. So this is it. So let's start with the one of the main keynotes today that was 
the IoT paradox. <laughs> the IoT paradox, right? The more data you have, the less you make of it. So Alicia, could you explain us what's that? Yes, so um, as part of our um, pro product development product process, we are always talking to, to clients, to users. And we um, did a survey um, for, with, with 50 energy managers, and we were hearing always one thing um, time and time again, I don't have time to analyze yeah. my data. It's too much. Um, and probably this sounds familiar to you because, um, you know, uh, most energy managers, 60% uh, of the people we spoke to, can only analyze the data once a month and the rest do it every quarter. And some of them cannot do it at all. They just don't have time. Of course, that getting that results from the surveys was not like the happy path for us because we are building an analytics platform that actually was hard to to get it used right so just one per month once per quarter or never at all so yeah so this is the paradox of the iot revolution so the more data we have the less we make of it um for example an, an average project with around 20 meters generates over 3 million readings per year this so is that's huge. Just huge so 100 <laughs> data points is 3 million and the bigger the project the bigger the bigger the stream of data so uh, that's why we will dexma optimize right trying to help to assist the energy managers the facility managers the non-experts in order to help them to analyze the data in real time right 24 7 no working hours no holidays so basically we are creating robots here right so we do train uh, artificial intelligence brains uh, taking into consideration how your building was behaving during the last 12 months, taking into consideration weather and so on. We train that brains and those brains, those robots are waking up every day at 5 a.m. and they analyze for you the data from the last 24 hours. That's it. So instead of having to go do manually and to analyze all your data, they do it for you, right? So you can actually focus on decisions. You get the anomalies, you know what's going on into the building, into the site, so you decide together with, with your with your organization how you solve that problem. But you know already that you have a problem. And the, the system, uh, let's say, that, uh, that gives you all the details that you need to know, not just the baseline and the, and the expected consumption, but as well uh, inputs from the HVAC, uh, CO2 uh, level, so all the parameters that are there and are related to this anomaly, we will be serving them. So that's like a game changer for us, right? So instead of just going there to analyze the data manually, now you have a tool, a robot that does it for you and helps you with, with that unit. How it works, really easy. We have three main ingredients from, from the left hand. We have historical consumption from your uh, utility meter or submeter or any device that you wanna run. Okay, we have historical consumption for the last 12 months, hourly data, and then we put into that cocktail as well the heating and cooling degree days together with the local weather and the local holidays. It's not the same, the holidays in Barcelona, that in Valencia, that in London, that in Paris, right? And you don't want to configure all the list of local holidays every year because that doesn't scale. So what we do is to have a different approach. We know where your building is located and we have a third party database where we go based on your postcode and take the local holiday. And that's it, very, very easy and easy and very fast to configure. So we have these three ingredients that we put it into the cocktail. This is what we say the cocktail actually it's the training of the artificial intelligence neural network. So the, net, the network gets trained and it, produces like a model okay and this model is the expected consumption for each particular day of your week and of your year of your building and we create separate models for each of your consumption so each model is different each building is different so each model is, it should be different then at 5 a.m every morning the the robots wake up and analyze the data from the last 24 hours so you get with your coffee at 9 a.m., 8 a.m., whatever the time you start working from your home, uh, you get the list of the anomalies already there and ready to get them fixed, right? I just asked to our data science team to share with us uh, a chart of how it looks like internally, 
right? This is when we are starting to develop this, that we get that chart just to just to check that it that it's working properly. And we have here the real consumption in green. This is the real consumption from a building. And in comparison with that, we have the expected consumption from the robot, from the artificial intelligence. You see that it's very precise, right? And when we detect a huge difference, we trigger an anomaly. The good thing is that you can configure that threshold based on money, right? So you can tell the system, hey, just tell me when we are getting an anomaly of more than 20 euros, 100 euros, 150 pounds, whatever the, the amount it is, it's relevant for, for you. And the beautiful thing from that, from working with that kind of technology, is that you can repeat this again and again. It never gets tired, right? So you repeat it thousands and thousands of times. So actually, the problem that we have that you don't have time to analyze the data, it's almost solved with Dexmap Optimus. So at the end, you have a lot of cards with different, <laughs> <laughs> with, with different anomalies, right? Showtime again. <laughs> so what if, if we just move back here, and now let's go to Optimize, OK? It's the third product. It's the last one, the, the, the product that we've launched this 2020. At the end of 2020, actually, to be honest, it was November. So here it is, very easy. You get the list. Each element for that list is a different anomaly that we have detected during the last week. Okay, so by the poly flows last week. We have six news anomalies coming from yesterday. Uh, last one was detected yesterday. We are analyzing or optimizing 65% of my whole portfolio of data points, right? And here it is, right? So now the best thing to do here is to sort by impact, by the money. And look at that, Alicia. So we have discovered an anomaly today, 16 hours anomaly, 275 euros. So let's check it out. You can just click on that. And it will load the anomaly detail, right? So you will see now appears a card uh, with the details of the anomaly. So here it is. Actually, this is not just a card. This is a task. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. So that, that building is going crazy, actually, <laughs> it, it seems, right? So uh, we got that anomaly around 2,000 kilowatt hours, uh, 275 euros according to their own tariff. And actually, look at the model. It seems that it's working very bad during the whole last week, right? So probably the BMS have had a problem or similar to that. So we can just go in detail here and analyze what's going wrong. Then we can as well add some text here right so check with the bms uh, master the set points for this way and you can as well add tags like bms uh, let's say uh, double or whatever you want right so you can just save it and once you have it in place you can then close close the the card now it is you can just close it you could change the status so now it's not new it's ongoing because we have started to perform a, a, a task and action on it right and you can just close that and now you can search by bms right so here it would appear all the reference all the all the tasks that have this stack right and that's it. So it's Dexma optimized, very simple, easy to configure. It, it goes very fast. So in less than three minutes, you have the model up and running. The models get trained automatically once per month. So we know that you are so brave that you change the behavior of, of the building. So they can reduce the consumption and so on. So the model needs to be retrained and they do uh, by their own once per month. Okay, And every day at 5 a.m., the robots wake up and analyze all your data and detect anomalies. Okay, so that's it. Let's move forward. Just to point out, you have 10 free data points to try Dexma Optimize across all your accounts. If you're a customer of Dexma, if you are not yet a customer of Dexma, just contact us, sales at dexma.com, and we will be more than happy to start working. Let's talk a bit about the future. The future. The future, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that was a tough year, right? 2020, wow. 
actually, we, we would like to start by reviewing what we did in 2020, 2021, because in 2020, we didn't have the opportunity to be with you in the next minute. Mm -hmm. but, but we still were working on things <laughs> a, lot. a lot. So as a, as a recap of what we did last year, uh, basically on the tech, we have uh, developed an integration with Salesforce with that big CRM. So if you're using Salesforce into your organization, then it's, now it's easier than ever to get the data up and running to Dexma. Then we started to work with something called building energy modeling, that it's applying not just consumption data, but how the building is built uh, and all that stuff in order to improve the recommendations engine, the, the non-intrusive load monitoring engine that we have and Dexma Tech as well. We as well work hard, very, very hard on increasing the number of recommendations available in our catalog. As a reference, in 2000, at the beginning of 2020, we had a catalog of around 20 recommendations. Now we are on 35, and we will keep growing this catalog. This means uh, recommendations such as free cooling, uh, HVC controls, uh, electric vehicle, solar PV, um, great, whatever, right? So all these recommendations are available for you for the for the virtual auditing system. And then we as well went really narrowing in order to segment the buildings that are using heating and cooling electricity and gas for for their own uh, needs. So that allows us to produce better and better. And in Analyze, uh, we, we have improved the measure, uh, measurement and verification of savings feature. So uh, we have a new interface. And also now you can track the, the savings of groups of projects. Um, and we've added a great feature that makes the projects for you basically automatically uh, calculate the baseline. And also with one click, you create a measure and verification code. Uh, so you have to do all the settings. Um, also, in Analyze, we've uh, in, expanded our solar um, photovoltaic, photovoltaic solutions, um, and we've added um, monthly billing to the cost screen um, to see the, the monthly um, evolution, and we've added um, the new French and Spanish tariffs. Um, and also, because of the, the arising need with the reopening after, you know, COVID, COVID yeah. exactly. Uh, we've improved our indoor air quality features to include uh, loads of indicators like um, CO2, um, the, uh, the well, tem temperature, humidity, uh, the volatile organic volatile. compounds, <laughs> particles, so many, many of them. Right? Yeah, the big and the small particles. <laughs> I'm not an engineer. <laughs> uh, so we, we've improved it so you can share it with your users so you can show how safe your buildings are exactly and then optimize right so we have shown a bit of it optimize it's that i, I think it was like the missing step for energy managers and facility managers very busy so they are busy solving other problems they don't have time to analyze the data so let's enable optimize to help them with that right but it's not there, right? So this is how we believe uh, the matureness status of five levels of energy intelligence automation. The first level are companies, organizations that they don't really care about energy or energy performance, right? So this is the level zero. Mm -hmm. And then some companies are, they do care, but they're all fully manned. So the energy manager or facilities manager uh, finds the data from the bill or data from other sources and inputs it maybe in an Excel spreadsheet, um, just everything manually. Yeah. Then level two would be assistant, right? That it's okay. You start, so you you decide that having an Excel, it's not enough. And so you decide to deploy some meters, some sensors, taking data in real time from your, from your utility meter. But you have uh, a platform that it's very basic in terms of analytics, right? So that would be the level to a system. Yeah, and then you have partial automation. So you have advanced analytics, you have real-time savings verification, alerts, um, automated reports, but everything is done sort of in a sort of lowish frequency, monthly, something like that. Then we achieve level four, that is where the XMA is today, where you start to have high automation. Right? And basically, it's artificial intelligence based. 
And it's where the energy manager and the facility manager work in symbiosis with AI intelligence models. So they can start to be proactive, the models, and assist the humans in order to make recommendations and to optimize the energy performance. But we believe that there is a five step, right? Yeah, the fifth step is where we're going. We want to go to end-to-end -end optimization. We want the system to predict what's going to fail and to um, report to the energy manager, and then also propose solutions to the energy manager that they can automatically execute. So they can make the decisions, but everything is much more automated. All right. And that's why we're showing today the roadmap. So in case you're a competitor, please don't take a screenshot of this. <laughs> uh, we have our simplified roadmap here showing it to you. We are very transparent. We have divided the roadmap as always in four different stream lanes. The first one for the platform, so everything regarding technology, security, and so on. And then each of the three products that we have, detect, analyze, and optimize. So at the beginning, the platform, we are now very focused on the historical scalability. You are brave, you have more and more data from other platforms, historical data, many years. That's at the end, it's a huge amount of data that we need to process very quick in order to start with the setup of your project. And we are working on that. Then, of course, then we have continuously improvements like UX, UI, coherence, stability, security. As Guillem or CTO told you before, this is becoming really, really important for us. So we are continuously investing money on it. Then if we go to detect, detect, as you know, it bases a lot on recommendations, how you virtually disaggregate the consumption compared with benchmarking. So a lot on, on artificial intelligence as well. So we keep working on that, right? And recommendations library. So we will keep it growing and growing until, I don't know, we arrive to 1,000, mm -hmm. 10, 10,000 recommendations, a million, <laughs> a million? <laughs> who knows, who knows? And then of course on analyze, the main focus this year is dashboards and advanced analytics, right? So dashboards, the, our dashboards were built in 2012. So now it's time to change it, replace it. We have learned a lot during these years. We get a lot of feedback from you, from existing customers. So we want to make it so good this time. We are very proud of the solution that we achieved. And we are now starting with the first iterations that they will be delivered by Q3 this year, the first ones. But this is something that will be continuously being evolved forever and ever. Yeah, I'm going. Right? Then uh, on optimize, we are nowadays focused on the API, right? Uh, in order to push the anomalies outside of Dexma platform. So in case you have a ticketing system, you have a CAFM system for maintenance, you can just push the anomalies to your system. So it, it belongs into your already existing workflows into your organization. Guillem told you before about no code, low code, uh, low code. So that's, that's the idea, right? So using very seamless integrations to push it out of the platform. But the good thing is coming afterwards, right? So how do we send the anomalies in a summary email to our customers? How we scale the UI, you are using it more and more every, every day. So the UI needs to scale, needs to be faster. And then how to solve uh, hardware problems with software. So if we know the pattern of your consumption, can we maybe fill the gaps that the hardware was not uh, able to send to a platform? And in 2022, 2023, according to historical knowledge, AI and so on, we will be working on predictive models. And this is like the final step to be at the, at the fifth level. Good, so of course, confidential, don't take screenshots on that. <laughs> Too late. Too late, maybe, right. <laughs> so now this is the finish of the first track. So the marketing team told me that they have to explain to you that now we have three different tracks on going in parallel. Right. So you have to choose which ones you're gonna go. The track number A or the track A is start improving your energy efficiency. This is specifically created for people who has not yet started working with Dexma, so new customers. Then we have the utility of the future, specific for energy providers and utilities. I will be there uh, making that track as well. And then we have boost your outcomes as a Dexma customer. So for organizations that are already working with us, we want to explain to you the main trends of the market that we see and how, how to make it bigger. So you have the, the links here. 
I think that we have already published it into the chat, exactly. So into the chat, LED has written the, the three links as well. So thanks, thanks so much for being there connected. Okay. It's been a pleasure as always, as every year. We would like to make this more, let's say, personal and in place. Yes. <laughs> but COVID restrictions is what it is. So maybe next year we could we could be together again. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so guys, uh, we will close that webinar. Please connect to the to the other uh, sessions that we have. And the party has not yet finished. <laughs> <laughs> See you. Bye bye.